Alright, good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I have the privilege of being able to share with you today. And um, I don't know, I, I think I'm friends with at least some of you on Facebook or Instagram. And you may have seen a post earlier this week that clued you into the fact that I was going to speak today. It was a post about a song that I had written. And I've never successfully written a song before in my life. But in the last few weeks, I feel like God really uh, gave me the inspiration for it. And like I'm kind of amazed at what he allowed to come out through that song. Um, and the song basically tells my story. It tells the story of different conversations I've had with God at, at different points in my life. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to share uh, my journey over the last few years, especially the parts pertaining to the song that I wrote, and then at the end I'll share the song with you. So, um, to start off, I'd like to share this quote with you. It's probably a familiar quote to you. It's from Steps to Christ, which is one of my favorite books. If you haven't read it, you've probably had people tell you that you should read it. And I'm going to tell you again, you should read it if you haven't. And if you have, you should read it again. <laughs> um, it's from Steps to Christ, page 80. If you will go to work as Christ designs that his disciples shall, and win souls for him, you will feel the need of a deeper experience and greater knowledge of divine things, and will hunger and thirst after righteousness. You will plead with God, and your faith will be strengthened and your soul will drink deeper drafts of the well of salvation. Encountering opposition and trials will drive you to the Bible and prayer. You will grow in grace and in the knowledge of Christ and will develop a rich experience. I pray that this is the experience all of us are having because no matter where we are, if we are Christians, God has called us to be missionaries. Um, I, some of you probably know this, um, I'm here as a student missionary, and this is not my first time being a student missionary. I was a student missionary several years ago. And that was my first experience really working uh, in missions or in ministry actively. And it definitely made a huge impact on my life. There were many times during that year when I felt very deeply my need for a greater love for the people that I was with. Um, for a greater joy, for more patience, basically all of the fruits of the Spirit. Um, and I would go to God and I would say, God, I, I don't have the love that I need. Please give me love. And God would do it. God is always faithful. Um, there were also various, various trying circumstances that we all go through. Discouragement. Um, sometimes we're all human and we are all sinners and sometimes we wound each other and th I had wounds that others had given me I also had self-inflicted wounds wounds that I gave myself and in all of those circumstances in all of those trials God was faithful and he spoke to me in ways that were absolutely tailored to my heart and my needs at that time some of the ways that he spoke to me um, that year was through godly music. Raise your hand if music is a way that God speaks to you sometimes. Definitely a way he speaks to me. Um, he also spoke to me through quotes or Bible verses. Raise your hand if God speaks to you that way sometimes. And he also spoke to me through the kindness of friends, just doing the right thing at the right time to give me the encouragement I needed. Um, I'm going to share one particular uh, experience from that year with you and this experience has become one of my landmarks uh, it's like a rock that I can always turn and look back at in my Christian experience so this experience happened when I was serving as a student missionary and I was trying to decide if I should stay for a second year or if I should go back home and um, of course I prayed about it uh, what do you do when you make big decisions? Often you write out a pros and a cons list, you know, reasons why you should go or stay. So I did that, and I prayed, and I didn't like have a big sign, but it seemed like the right thing to do to stay for another year. It seemed logical, and it seemed like that's how God could probably use me the best, so 
that's pretty much what I was planning to do. And one Friday morning in this whole process, I woke up and I had this urgent sense that I didn't know God's will and I needed to know God's will that day. And I didn't understand why, but um, I didn't have to work that day. So I decided to just go to the park where I could be by myself in nature and with God and I could pray and really seek what God's will was in this decision. Um, I arrived at the park at about 8 a.m. that day, and I told God, and to be honest, I was a little bit scared to say this, but I told God, I'm not going to leave until I know your will. <laughs> and I was a little bit scared that, like, it wouldn't happen, and I would have to just leave anyways, <laughs> or, or that I would be there for, like, you know, 10 days. <laughs> no, no, not really. <laughs> but I was a little bit scared. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. <laughs> and um, so I just, I sat there in the grass and I prayed and I had my hymnal and my Bible and my journal with me. So I wrote in my journal, I prayed, I sang some songs. Nothing was really happening until about three hours in. Uh, I was writing in my journal and uh, this Bible verse came to my mind. It was a Bible verse that I had memorized a couple weeks before this day. And I would invite you to turn there with me. It's Exodus chapter 3, verse 15. Exodus 3, 15. I do have it on the screen, but if you have a Bible, I would encourage you to look it up for yourself. Oh, sorry, not 15, 312. <laughs> Exodus 312. Um, so this is in the context of God talking to Moses at the burning bush and calling him to lead the people out of Egypt. And this is something that God says to Moses. So he said, I will certainly be with you, and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Now, at first, when this verse was coming to my mind as I was writing, I was like, okay, this has nothing to do with anything of this situation. And I was kind of trying to push it away, but it was so persistent. I finally gave in and thought, maybe God is trying to say something to me through this verse. So I looked it up in my Bible, and I ended up reading, like, the whole story on into chapter 4 as well. And I looked up a couple of cross-references, and I'm not going to try to take the time to try to explain exactly how. But through this verse, God spoke to me and showed me that he had a ministry for me back at home. And, um, and that that was what I should do. <laughs> so um, I was like, wow, God, you really like, you spoke to me through this verse in a way that I never would have imagined. It was a really neat experience. But it gets better. I realized that that was actually the answer to a prayer. I had prayed a couple weeks before that, that when I was beginning to go into this decision-making process, I had prayed that God would help me to know the right decision by showing me a ministry. And God had just done exactly that. And it gets better. <laughs> the same day that I prayed that prayer, I memorized that verse. So God had actually given me the answer in that verse before I prayed the prayer, but I wasn't ready to hear it until two weeks later. So um, that, as you can, you can probably imagine, how that became a landmark in my experience. Um, and uh, I was very confident in knowing that God wanted me to be back at home the following year. So I went back home, and I finished uh, my schooling. I graduated from college with my education degree. And then I accepted a job at a small Adventist school in Minnesota. And um, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. God doesn't always lead us in big ways like he did. Um, when I was choosing, when I was trying to figure out like where I should accept a job or should I, I should apply for a job, uh, there wasn't like a big sign from God. Um, it was just, you know, I interviewed in Minnesota. I liked the place. It seemed like a good fit. And I went there, and I think that God definitely used that. He worked in me through that experience, and uh, I pray that I was also a blessing to the church and the school there. Um, so I think that a lot of times God 
gives us the power of choice and he expects us to use that to make our own decisions. But sometimes he does have specific plans and he leads us in certain directions. Um, so ever since I had come back from my first student missions experience, I desired to live a mission-oriented life wherever I might be, whether I was at home or whether God called me somewhere else. Um, sometimes my job got a little bit tedious, uh, monotonous, discouraging, you name it, I probably experienced it. And uh, sometimes when I kind of got tired of the job I was doing, I would look at different calls for overseas positions and I'd be like, God, I think it's time for me to go back overseas and serve you in the mission field, yeah? <laughs> and so I'd look at these places, but ultimately I realized that um, I, I was acting on, like I was looking for these places from a selfish motive. I was trying to escape from whatever uncomfortable situation I was in. And it wasn't God's will, and it never happened. <laughs> um, there was one point where I was in a relationship with a young man, and I was really excited about the possibility of a future, and I kind of had this idea of how the next several years were going to look, and the relationship ended very suddenly, and all of that is gone. So all of my hopes and dreams for the future I realized had been centered in this relationship rather than in God. And I had nothing, nothing left. No hopes or dreams for the future. And so that caused me to turn to God and really ask him, like, what is your plan for me? Where should I go next year? So several weeks went by after that happened. Um, and then I received an email from Adventist Frontier Missions which is the organization I had served as a student missionary with. And the email wasn't really anything that important, but it made me curious about what calls they had open, because I know they're always looking for people to go serve as student missionaries. And I thought, well, maybe if I look at all the different calls, um, I'll, I'll be reminded of somebody who would be a good fit for a call, and maybe I can hook them up, and, and that will be my contribution. I can help somebody else go to the mission field. So I went on their website, and I was looking through all the calls, and there was one call that really caught my attention. It was a call for a cello teacher to the Central Thai Project in Konkan. And um, that wasn't exactly what I was looking Like, I wasn't looking for a place for me to go, um, but it really caught my attention, and I couldn't get it out of my mind. In fact, I got so excited about it that Probably like two days after I saw it, I was already like downloading Thai language apps on my phone <laughs> and like starting to learn Thai and like I don't even know if I'm going. And um, so I was I was really excited about it. I was really excited about it, and yet at the same time, I did not want to go if it wasn't God's plan because I had the experience before of of you know, selfishly looking for a place to escape my uncomfortable situation, and I did not want to go if it was coming from my selfish motives uh, as it had before. And if there was any, ever a time when I would want to escape, just after a breakup seems like a, that kind of time. So I needed to be very sure that it was God uh, putting this before me and not myself. So, um, that, uh, like a couple days after I got this email and, and learned about this call, I, uh, it was Thanksgiving. So I drove from Minnesota to Nebraska to spend Thanksgiving with my family. Um, I do have a map there. A lot of people, even in the United States, don't know where Nebraska is. So there's Nebraska, kind of in the middle. <laughs> and Minnesota is up there, the north one. And uh, it's about a 10 hour drive from from where I lived in Minnesota to where my family lived. So um, Wednesday or Thursday, I drove for 10 hours to spend Thanksgiving with my family in Nebraska. Um, and then spend Thanksgiving there. And then on Sunday, I had to make the drive back up another 10 hours. So uh, it was on the drive back to Minnesota after Thanksgiving. Um, I have I had memorized several chapters of the Bible, like different psalms and things like that, 
And I mean, when you're driving for 10 hours, what do you do? <laughs> so I decided it might be a good time to review those because I hadn't reviewed them in a while. And if you don't review, you forget. So I took out my, you know, my Bible memory verse cards and I was reviewing all the different passages I had learned. And um, all of them, it seemed like God was speaking directly to me. Um, it was very relevant to the situation and my current uh, heart status at the time. And then I came to Isaiah 55. And this became another landmark experience like my experience in the park. Um, and in Isaiah 55, God basically called me to turn back and fully commit to him again. And he also assured me that this call to Thailand was from him. I would like for you to turn to Isaiah 55 with me. I do not have it on the screen because it's kind of long, but please turn to Isaiah 55. And I'm just going to read through it as you follow along. And I'm not going to try to explain it, but maybe you'll kind of get how God was able to share these things with me, how he was calling me to him and also telling me that this call to Thailand was from him. Isaiah 55. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the sure mercies of David. Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the people. Surely you shall call a nation you do not know, and nations who do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. So that was the passage that God spoke to me through that day. I was still a little bit distrustful of myself. I was, I was fairly confident at this point that the call was from God, but I decided I wanted to take one week to pray about it and be absolutely sure, and then I would take action after one week. Over the week, God gave me two more confirming signs. Um, on Tuesday morning of that week, I was starting to have like a few more doubts, and so I prayed that God would give me some kind of confirmation, some assurance of what he had told me in the car, that this was from him. And within an hour of praying that, I received the same exact email again that had started the whole thing a week before. And it was so bizarre, and I believed that that was the sign that God was confirming to me. The second time was on Sabbath morning. I don't know if any of the rest of you are like me, but sometimes if I'm feeling discouraged or, um, or doubtful or, or something, sometimes 
especially on Sabbath since it's God's day, I'll pray for a special blessing relevant to that. I don't know if anybody else does that. I don't know if there's necessarily scriptural grounds for it, but I do that. And so this Sabbath, I prayed that God would give me one more confirming sign. Um, I got to church and was handed a bulletin. And I looked in the bulletin, and the title of the message for the day was called, Grow Where You're Planted. And when I saw that, I thought, huh, that seems like a stay message, like stay where you are. But I was also expecting that God was going to give me a go message. So I was like, God, I think you're going to turn this into a go message somehow, even though it sounds like a stay message. Um, so we, I went to Sabbath school, and then it came time for church service, and the speaker got up, put his PowerPoint on the screen, and the title of his message on the PowerPoint was slightly different. It said, grow where you're planted until God calls you somewhere else, or something like that. And I was like, aha, <laughs> this is going to be a go message, isn't it? <laughs> and so in his message, he, um, it was a very interesting message. He talked about different trees that were growing in very unexpected and, uh, frankly, not very habitable conditions. Um, so there was, a, there was a large tree that had a very big fork where the trunk basically split into two. And there was another tree that was growing right in the crook of that tree. And it doesn't seem like it should be able to grow there, but there it was, and it was thriving. He showed uh, another tree that was like, it had been blown over by the winds and it was growing at a really odd angle. And uh, it doesn't seem like it should be able to grow that way, but there it is, it's growing. And there was another tree that was, um, I think it was on the shore of one of the Great Lakes, or off of the shore of one of the Great Lakes. So there was like this rocky, steep shore, and then the water, and then there was this really big rock in the water, and there's a tree growing on the rock. Now how does the tree get its nutrients? It can't put its roots into the rock. It actually had a single, very large root that was growing across to the land over the water. Um, at some point there must have been like a land bridge there that had collapsed or something. But the tree was still there on the rock. It still had its root to the land and it was growing just fine. You wouldn't expect that it could, but it was. And then the last tree that the speaker shared was a tree that was being transplanted. Um, so there, I don't know if you've seen these trucks, but there's these big trucks. They have this big like pointed scoop and they just dig in, scoop up a whole tree and then turn it sideways and you can take the tree wherever you want it and replant it. Um, so when he came to the transplant truck, I really sensed God telling me that I was about to be transplanted. So that was the tree that related to me at that time. So after this, I was confident in God's call and I moved forward and here I am now. <laughs> so those are some of the ways that God has led in my life. Some of the ways that God has um, called to me as I've called to him. Uh, the title of my song is Calling and it has two meanings. It's me calling to God. It's God calling to me. And it's also the calling that he has given me to come here. Um, I'm far from perfect. I make plenty of mistakes and bad choices, but through everything, God is always faithful. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what God is calling to you about. Um, maybe you're discouraged. Maybe you've sinned and he's calling you to repentance. Maybe you're facing a big decision and you don't know which way to go. But whatever God is calling you to you about, whatever situation you're fa facing, he is faithful, and he knows how to speak to you. Amen. 
So I'm going to have the words to the song on the screen just in case you can't hear me very well because I don't sing very loudly. I will use this. <laughs> but hopefully you'll be able to follow along there if you want to. Okay, test, testing. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. 
Father, we thank you for um, the way that you've shown your faithfulness in my life, and I pray that um, it is an encouragement to others as well. I pray that um, you will impress us with, with your calling on our life, and um, I pray that we will be willing to listen and to follow that call. Uh, please go with us today. Help us to abide in your spirit today and throughout the week. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.